by using nine of those tanks. In February 26, the US 7 Tower began fighting Iraq Republican Guard at Map Cornet designated 73 Sting. US troops ran directly into Brigade of Elite Tower Division in the middle of sandstorm with no air support. And they cut down 30 tanks, 14 armored vehicles, and hundreds of infantrymen before reaching their limit of advance. Those tanks are M1 Abrams tanks, and in this video, I will show you history, design, and working principle of M1 Abrams tank, which is the main battle tank for Americans. Let's begin with history. The M1 Abrams is the third generation main battle tank designed by Chrysler Defense and produced under the General Dynamics brand. The tank was introduced in 1979, entered service in 1980, and is still undergoing production. The system has been featured in 1991 Gulf War and Bosnia along with the US invasion of Afghanistan in 2001 and Iraq in 2003. A total of 3,273 M1 Abrams tanks were produced for the US Army. 4,796 tanks were built for the US Army. 221 for the US Marines and 880 co-produced with Egypt. Now let's see the three advanced versions of this tank. In 1978, the first M1 Abrams tank was produced. In 1985, M1A1, and finally in 1986, the advanced version of both tanks were CAM in production and called M1A2. This tank was designed based on the experience gained from the performance of M1A1 and incorporates new technologies to deliver support and superior firepower and mobility making it one of the best battle tanks in the world. Let's go to design and working principle of the tank. The tank was named on the honor of United States Army General Creighton W. Evans Jr., who was the commander in the Vietnam War. The idea of what the M1 Evans tank was to keep it low to the ground so that harder to hit. Angle sides on the tank allowed the enemy fire off the side. It's a bit cozy inside, so I hope you are not claustrophobic. During operations, the crew may spend hundreds of hours inside with very little sleep. There are many versions of the tank. We have the M1, then M1A1, and then M1A2. They look very similar on the outside, but there has been plenty of improvements to items such as the armor, electronics, and the weapon systems. Each new version is generally heavier and slower, but increased take makes up for. For the rest of the video, I'm gonna focus specifically on the M1A2 Abrams tank. Let's look at some specs. The height is 8 feet, the length is 32 feet, and the width is 12 feet. This tank weighs 68 US tons. It's equal to the weight of 35 cars. Even with all that weight, the tank is capable of speeds of up to 42 miles per hour. It has fuel capacity just under 500 gallons. Again, just for comparison, average cars can only hold about 16 gallons. Let's look at some of the features of the tank. The caterpillar track, the wheels, the hull or main body, the turret, the engine. The tank holds the crew of four. Three of them are inside the turret and one of them is oil front. Now we are familiar with the outside of the tank. Let's look, let's look more specifics and start with the caterpillar tracks. They are made of steel with replaceable rubber pads. There are seven road wheels on each side of the tank. Raised ailer wheel at the very front and the drive's rocket in the back. This one is the only one that is powered by the engine. It moves the entire track alone. The road wheels also have suspension built into them. The whole reason we use caterpillar tracks is to allow the tank to go over some very rough terrain. The tank can even climb very steep hills. The tank is steered by altering the speed of the tracks. For example, to turn left, the right track is need to move faster than the left track. The next step is the engine, which is in the very back of the tank. For repairs, the entire engine can lift it up out of the tank. This is the AGT-1500 engine, which can run off several different fuels, but most of the time it runs off a jet fuel. In your car, you will find what is called 
the internal combustion or piston engine but in the tank you will find the turbo engine or turbine engine a little bit more like a jet engine you will find on the airplanes however this engine is actually fairly quiet which is really important to you don't give away your tank's position to nearby enemies and these are the two side cooling units to help remove the heat from the engine on the front there is headlights here and four tough hooks down here this top part is called the turret it can rotate all the way around by about nine seconds this is the main gun which is the 120 mm smoothbore cannon this means that the shells are 120 mm the shell speed is 3500 miles per hour automatic stabilizers allow the gun to stay locked on the targets even tank goes through rough terrain right next to this is smaller coaxial machine gun up on top there is usually at least one more machine gun to operate on the side are smoke green launcher one on each side of the tank this make it harder to be seen during combat there are two hatches on the top of the turret the commander's hatch and the loader's hatch inside of the turret you will find three out of four crew members the commander can see 360 degrees around the tank through the viewing portals the driver sits up at a very front there is hatch up here that can be open to go 